Right, so hello people, you've joined me in my Phase 3 Standard Vanguard. I thought it was high time for another little update. Yeah, I've not had much chance to do anything really on the car uh, lately uh, since the last time, other than a few uh, little jobs here and there. Uh, but I have reinstated uh, the switch knobs which I've uh, re-lettered and polished uh, you may have seen my video on that the technique I used to restore them but they're looking a lot lot better now much better than they were uh, and I've also just made that little label uh, just because I couldn't uh, I couldn't not do it when I had the uh, Di Dymo uh, label maker I uh, couldn't resist it well today I'm going to be uh, just explaining a bit more about the overdrive this car as I have established uh, left the factory without overdrive uh, established that from the VIN number um, but at some point in the car's life, probably uh, recently, it acquired overdrive, which is a good thing. I'm very thankful for that. And, uh, you know, it is an excellent, useful feature. Effectively turns the ordinary three-speed uh, gearbox into a five-speed box. So, what have I been doing? Well you will already know if you've been following this series that the wiring was uh, uh, suspect you know the wrong colors what i said were the wrong colors and the relay this one there was some uh, inconsistency with the operation of it you know when i operated the switch when i turned the switch to off um, it seemed to come on and vice versa so it wanted all you know ripping out and starting again from scratch which is exactly what i'm going to do uh, which is why i've removed everything all the wiring and control gear anyway so this was the relay that was in the car i've cleaned it up although i think there was a sticker on there now, although it was just the remains of a sticker, it didn't say anything. Uh, I've cleaned it up, and I believe this is a Lucas 6RA relay, uh, which, uh, amongst other applications, was used for overdrive, but it's the wrong one for the car. And uh, it's a much later relay than what the car should have. You can see the the four contacts including that uh, double one spade uh, terminals or luca terminals and all i can make out is w2 uh, maybe that one's c2 there in the middle i'm not sure but you'll have seen this in previous videos uh, so i removed it the 6RA was uh, a replacement for some of the earlier relays, a sort of direct replacement really. Uh, and it was sold as being a miniature relay because physically it is a lot smaller. As you can see that this is one, a brand new old stock one which I was uh, very... Uh, I'm just looking at that car, the clutch won't last for very long. Uh, yeah, so this uh, relay, new old stock, had to pay a pretty penny for it, but uh, I were really pleased to get that SB40. I'll go on to that in a minute, that's why I've got the book. Uh, but the 6RA, yeah, took it out. And that'll you know do for something else in the future i'm sure this other one is a horn relay you see it's only got the three contacts it's a horn relay and that is also 
an SB40. Now that is important because there's two SB40s but they are distinctly different relays. So go to the book, open up the book. You will remember as well, um, I did uh, mention that the wiring colours were all wrong. Uh, I covered that in one of the previous videos uh, when I had that uh, useful book, Automobile Electrics or something by Arthur W. Judge. Very handy book because it contains uh, Lucas circuit diagrams for practically everything of uh, the period so let me get to the electrical section find that again M M M there it is M section M I'm really glad I put those felt tip tabs in so you can see uh, you can see here SB40-1 for the horn relay overdrive relay SB40-1 and I discovered that the SB40 it's a family of relays uh, the important thing is the part number here so you see the part numbers differ it's double three one five seven for the overdrive relay and double three double one six for the horn relay so looking at this double three one five seven i don't really think the d means much at all uh, i think we can disregard that but you can see it's 12 volts and it has a date code of what I believe is October 1960 and it's got the correct uh, screw terminals there for the uh, flag terminals like uh, like this and uh, I've got uh, an example here this was uh, this come with a overdrive relay for me Humber Sadly, they were cut, not by me. Otherwise, I, I could have used them had they been complete in, on my Humber. Such is life. So, this is what the sort of harness I'm going to be making up for that one. But this is the horn relay uh, SB40. I got this off my mate Martin with the Hawks. And you can just make that out there double three double one six with a date of august 1954 double three double one six so you do have to be careful you know when buying spare parts that uh that they do <laughs> that they do. i was laughing because uh the cats come round and the children are there. Uh, where was I? Yeah. So get the right part. It's not always the model, but the actual part number is the one you want. So having covered that, and going back to the circuitry, none of the uh, wire colours are actually given in this book, so I can you know forgive the person who installed uh, the overdrive you know they might not have known well they wouldn't have known if all they were doing is going off this book uh, but now with my other book I know better and I have ordered from Autosparks not only some of the flag terminals the correct ones for the job I've also got, I'm not going to get all these out because they're all coiled up, but I've also got the correct colour wires, you know some of them are for other jobs but these, these slate coloured ones, slate purple, slate green and uh, white, uh, they if you remember 
or if you haven't seen my previous videos you might want to check them out many of the right colours for the overdrive circuit so that is what I'll show that is what I shall be uh, doing not just yet I'm gonna wait till the bodywork's done I think I don't want to uh, install it you know with a nice new expensive relay and everything then send the car in for a couple of months to uh, have the bodywork done which gives you a clue as to the direction I'm going with it but I'll cover that uh, in a future video I have been shopping for parts uh, panels and uh, something to cover in a future video so this is the overdrive uh, column switch which I've removed as you can see down there uh, this is the column switch and it actually surprised me because it's got three terminals and I've got to say I do I do really enjoy working on stuff like this it's proper old school electronics you know with little grub screws and things I mean I really enjoy working on it stuff like that but you can uh, see why uh, they had to go over to Luca terminals because of the just because of the amount of time taken on the assembly line and the, uh, the little components involved it, it all it all costs money and time and time is money so you can see why they went over to them uh, Luca terminals, spade terminals, because anybody really could just shove them on and disconnect them as well, much much quicker. Uh, so this is the operation switch, and I've never seen anything like this before. It was a new one on me because I can disconnect them now. And I feel a sneeze coming on, so if that happens, excuse me in advance. I can disconnect them. Like that. And, uh, yeah, as I say, I've never actually seen anything like this, because it's, it's one of them... Uh, pinch terminals you know that pinches the wire which I haven't come across before so that's uh, interesting indeed and then the wires just come out the back and down the uh, down the uh, stalk there into the steering column and then to the relay and uh, control gear. So after I removed this switch, I had a look at it and I thought, well, that's uh, not quite right, is it? As I say, three terminals, so that presumably would be the feed, the central one, and it'd be one of these you used. Now this looks like one of the old uh, Crabtree toggle switches to me, you know, where they had a spring and it was meant to go across to either make or break. Well this would explain why the overdrive was in permanently, because that should move with the flick switch and it's not doing so a good clean up and uh, good clean up and oiling should see that working smartly again because uh, I can't be having that uh, you know working intermittently. It's got to be right uh, first time every time. But you know it it is quite a nice little thing. Never come across one before. And uh, I'm sure I'll be able to get it working again without too much trouble. So what else was I going to say? I've covered the switch, I've covered the wiring. 
Oh yeah, that's what I was going to say. As you can see, I removed the uh, column stock. Now, uh, one of these screws was missing. I don't know if these are original specification, but I um, I fitted another one. It's the one with the smaller head, that one, just because it caught. If you can see the uh, if you can see the holes there that was near that one was near to the instrument cluster and the screwdriver was just catching the baker light so i've put the one with a smaller head which i'm excuse me going to use for that also speaking of uh, screws the rear of the uh, stock the rear cover there had these uh, unsightly and incorrect, hang on, let's get hold of these, unsightly and incorrect, uh, well, one's a Phillips and the other's a Posi drive by the looks of it, but uh, they were unsightly and incorrect, so I've had a route in my uh, boxes and I've managed to find two of those recessed heads. Uh, with the single slotted uh, head there so that'll look a lot better not that you'll really be able to see it but you know that's the uh, RCD uh, perfectionism and looking at the picture there that's why it should have uh, with the wires exposed at the back <coughs> but you wouldn't see them anyway and they would be held in place there uh, so yeah that's uh, it'll be a nice little job to do that I may uh, pre-install some of the wiring I might do uh, I might not do it just depends uh, certainly I can make up the one again from the switch re you know have that ready because it's just there with two uh, snap connectors so that'll be easy enough to do using the, the uh, these as a template but as for the other stuff I might just leave it until I'm ready to reconnect it fully so that was that Fox um, only one more thing now and that is the uh, parts under the engine bay Take that with me. So you'll remember this uh, again, more uh, redundant overdrive wiring in the wrong colour. Uh, I do like to use the right stuff, it makes things so much easier and it looks a lot better as well. Real uh, professional job I like to do that was where the relay was and this is where the uh, re new replacement will be going there as per the uh, guidelines with the three uh, terminals facing upwards which also allow the details to be seen these were the uh, screws securing that uh, 6RA relay, uh, again totally wrong, and uh, one with a knackered head, it was that tight, but I guessed correctly that there were two BA threads, so I dug out some uh, cheese head, two BA screws for that. And you can see I've cleaned up more of the wiring and they've retained the colours very, very well. The PVC wiring here was, uh, it really was a vast improvement over the old uh, cloth braided type. So, there you go, that's it for this one. I might have rambled on a bit here. I'm just now it's coming up to 20 minutes which is where I'm gonna leave it but yeah overdrive uh, 
not going to be installed yet, but yes, I have all the parts now, which is, uh, you know, another weight off my mind with the car. So I'll see you next time when uh, I'll be discussing more serious things. Hope you will join me.